Poisonous, prickly, and eating their way through parts of the Great Barrier Reef. The crown of thorn starfish may be native to Australian waters, but this predator has the potential to chew through one of the country's most famous natural icons. So far, the current outbreak is largely limited to far north Queensland, between Cairns and Cooktown. If this outbreak continues the way we've seen past outbreaks develop, then we'll see it move south to reefs offshore from Townsville and then Airlie Beach over the next 10 years or so. In the past 50 years, there have been three major outbreaks. After numbers began to climb again in early 2011, a new Australian government control program put the coral-eating starfish firmly in its sights. Divers tasked with culling the animal were armed with a pool chemical that's harmless to other plants and animals. The problem is we have to inject each crown of thorns 20 or more times in order to kill it. And obviously that makes the process pretty slow and pretty laborious. But this method has now been superseded by a new protein mixture that produces an allergic reaction in the starfish, causing it to break apart and die within 24 hours. It comes after a series of field trials and lab tests showed no impact on other marine life and researchers say only one injection is needed. It's impressive. With the current method, one single dive, you can kill between 40 and 60 starfish. With the new method, between 400 and 500 per dive. But the Great Barrier Reef isn't the only place grappling with crown of thorn starfish. Other countries where the problem is far worse have already expressed interest in the new single injection method. There are reports of uh, crown of thorn densities reaching up to 156,000 starfish per hectare in French Polynesia. A lot of outbreaks in the Philippines, in Japan. There are outbreaks in the Gulf of Oman. A lot of outbreaks in Africa too. But the long-term solution to the crown of thorn starfish threat remains not in the water, but on land. Declining water quality from land runoff, including high levels of nutrients from fertiliser, is fueling outbreaks by providing food for larval starfish. Now, most of them would starve to death under natural conditions, but because we're causing a bloom in their food population, many more of them survive, and that means we get these huge population outbreaks, which are what is unsustainable. One single starfish can produce up to 60 million eggs. So. You just need a few, but with the right conditions. While it's early days, there are signs those conditions are changing for the better. Report cards released under the Reef Plan Initiative show farmers and graziers are reducing runoff of sediment, fertilisers and pesticides, taking some pressure off the reef's ecosystem. This is a mammoth job to actually change how we manage the catchment so much that we reduce the pollution that comes off the catchment into the marine environment is absolutely a huge challenge. But in the early days, we're seeing that we can make inroads into that objective.